welcome everyone. I am Chip Chapman, and it is my honor and privilege to serve as the current president of Columbus Rotary Club. And on behalf of our club's members, it's my privilege to welcome you to this special recognition event. Although COVID prevented us from having our traditional middle and high school fairs this year, we're still committed to recognize students and faculty who did organize and carry out community service projects this year. This is our first virtual event since the Student Service Above Self program started way back in 2003, before many of these kids were born. <laughs> um, we join in you in hoping that this year, the 2021-2022 school year will be totally in person, so we can recognize teams from all schools at in-person fairs this time next year. So would you please now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure um, to introduce Dr. Lisa Dixon, Superintendent of Columbus City Schools via Zoom. Hello, everyone. It is great to be here. While we're not having an in-person ceremony, I am delighted that we're celebrating Service Above Self projects. Last year has certainly been a challenge for all of us, but especially our students. There have been many hurdles for them from starting online last April, beginning this school year fully virtual, missing their friends, and their social interactions and to establishing a new normal. So while the district suspended the community services requirements this year, these students forged on by conducting community service projects for their schools, their fellow students, and the community. How awesome is that? Despite what was going on, our students knew that these things were important. To our students, your leadership has made the lives of those around you better. You are our future, and we look forward to watching the changes that you would make along your academic journey. And to you, the Rotary, thank you again for making this opportunity happen for our students. Despite this pandemic, your commitment to Columbus City Schools has been so important for so many years, and we look forward to doing this in person soon. So to our students, again, best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Dixon. Also joining us today to recognize students and faculty is the president of the Columbus City School Boards of Education. Ms. Jennifer Adair. Good afternoon, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here, even though I am at home and it's on Zoom. I, like Dr. Dixon said, I'm excited to be able to participate uh, next year in person. You know, I, you know, believe in public service uh, at the bottom of my heart and community service and service above self is something that is really fundamental in the way that I view my role um, as being one of your elected leaders. And I know that my colleagues uh, believe that too. When we serve others, uh, we serve our community and we really are doing something for the betterment of everyone. And like Dr. Dixon said, our students who took the time uh, to do this in the middle of COVID, your impact is so great and so appreciated and honestly something that our world really needs right now. You know, every year I am just amazed uh, when I look at these projects that the Rotary honors, the amount of, of pride and, and the depth and the seriousness, honestly, of the things that the students are tackling. It is just awe-inspiring. Students, you inspire me to continue to serve. You are really making a difference. And I hope that you continue this spirit and continue your service as you move forward. It really is something that is amazing. And here's the other thing I know. You don't do this for awards or recognition. You do this because it is something you believe in and it is part of who you are. And that's what makes you so special. And Columbus Rotary and all your members 
this is the 18th year of doing this. This is amazing. And your dedication to our students to show them that these foundational principles of service and community is something that we appreciate and continue to appreciate. Your partnership is so important to us. You know, I'm really excited because uh, while I believe very fundamentally in service above self, I actually have my daughter participate in community service and we've done it. And next year, since she'll be in middle school, she'll get to participate in this program too. So I'm excited uh, for next year for the fair and congratulations to all of these students who are getting recognized today. And thank you again, Rotary, for your commitment to our students and our community. It was my pleasure being with you this uh, afternoon. Thanks. Thanks, President Adair. Appreciate you being here. And now to lead us through today's recognition, here is Rotarian Rick Studer, coordinator of the Student Service Above Self Program. Rick. Well, hello and thanks to all the Rotarians and community leaders joining us on this Zoom to help celebrate community service. Uh, we're going to hear three to four minute presentations by eight community service teams and also recognize Rotary scholarship recipients. Students, I want you to know that if we were in person, all the people watching you would applaud you big time for your work. Unfortunately, we got to stay muted, but uh, just know that they are cheering you on. So here we go. Centennial High School, you're up. So, okay. Good afternoon. My name is Joshua Ingram. I'm a senior at Centennial High School, and I'm also here with my teacher, Ms. Laszlo. Um, we decided to do this project when Ms. Laszlo introduced that she would like all of us to do a service project each year to learn to give back to our community organization that means the most to us as a class. Um, after all of us working together and coming up with ideas, we came up with writing letters to veterans. Since we were in the middle of a pandemic, it was a great way for us to still do a service project even though we were learning from home. Our goal for this project was write, to write a four to six letter each to a veteran. And then Ms. Lazlo would mail them to the organization called Hugs for Soldiers. We wanted the soldiers to know we were thankful and appreciated them for what they were doing for us and our country each and every day. And, uh, after reflecting, the only challenge is waiting on a response back. In January, we finally got some response back and it was great. It was really cool because they sent us pictures with the letters. The great thing about doing this project was that we never had to change anything with it because we knew from the beginning that we wanted a project that was pandemic friendly so that we could keep it going all year believe that we accomplished our goal because we got some responses back. We learned the art of writing a formal letter and we got to hear how much it meant from them to hear from us. When we were to continue working this project in the future, we would try and maybe reach out to more organizations in hopes to let more veterans know how much they are appreciated. We appreciate you all allowing us to be part of today's presentation and thank you for your time. Hey, Josh, how many other students were on your team? Um, uh, yeah, there's 11 of us. Excellent, excellent. I'm sorry about the screen share because I know you uh, showed me one of the letters uh, that uh, wasn't one of the letters you received back, which was just um, really, really touching. So good for you, good for you. Hey, thanks again. And uh, Josh, are you a senior? Yeah. Uh, are any of the uh, students on your team not seniors? Uh, yeah. They're ninth or twelfth. You know where I'm going. Maybe this, <laughs> maybe this uh, can uh, keep going next year, and who knows, expand. But up to you all. Thank you very, very much. Way to go. Letters to Beth Nelson. Awesome. Thank you. Now, virtual peer tutoring from Centennial.
Sarah. Hi, um, my name is Sarah Dada. I'm a sophomore at Centennial High School. I decided to do virtual peer tutoring when um, pandemic closed schools last March. I realized that my own siblings were kind of, didn't have really a finished education for that school year. And I took the liberty to do more like summer classes with them where I meet with my two younger sisters and we kind of, and I just kind of help them out and help them prepare for next year. This is when I kind of um, realized that I could tutor other students. So I reached out to more of my cousins as more family thing until COVID hit pretty hard. Then um, a lot of people began messaging me or video calling and this is how we could kind of help them out. But um, it also opened up the potential to do a completely virtual tutoring session. Uh, peer tutoring in a pandemic is learning to adjust yourself to new settings. Also the ability to like break the ice between you and the student because they don't know you. And if they're not, if they're afraid to ask questions, it's the same thing that th that's happening in class where they're afraid to speak to their teacher and ask how, how everything works and be able to understand it. Um, the biggest obstacle I faced was the fact that my school um, started rolling out teacher-based tutoring at the very same time, so it kind of eliminated any chances at getting high school students. I decided to send out an email and this self-made flyer to my guidance counselor from my former middle school. She began referring students my way, and that's kind of how um, I stumbled upon my current um, peer. Uh, we begin sessions every week, and we are currently doing so. Um, these sessions, uh, the mother has recently told me that his math grade has gone up to B plus in that he's really benefiting from the one-on-one -on -one sessions where he's able to ask questions and get easy explanations and, and help. Um, it's, not all, it's not just grades. It's, um, I actually learned that when I was teaching him how to find Sarah, you vanished. And us. I'm hoping to branch oh, off you. and continue to tackle more when the summer season begins. Uh, Sarah, thanks. Sarah, we have a moment. Can you uh, show us yourself so we can uh, see yeah, you? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you for your time and for listening to my and for helping me out. I also want to thank Mr. Eagle for assisting me through all of it. Well, way to go. It sounds it sounds really amazing. And uh, uh, you're a sophomore, correct? Yes. Uh, we, of course, are all hoping you will continue on with service next year, whatever you and maybe some other students choose to do. But uh, my gosh, during the pandemic, you really helped. He really helps some younger younger kids, and that's that's just excellent. So, bravo! Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, thanks, Centennial, for those two projects. Walnut Ridge, you are up. Sorry about that. My name is Denzel McCoy. I'm also a senior at Walnut Ridge High School, and we're going to be presenting our holiday food giveaway. You're muted, Denzel. Hey, Denzel, can you unmute yourself? Uh-oh. Can somebody help Denzel unmute himself? This is a great presentation. Mm.
Well, Denzel, that PowerPoint was really thorough. And thanks. I'm for sure glad that we had that to be able to read and see and find out what you all did. Um, is Jamarion Elmore, who is your partner in all of this, is he, is he available today? Walnut Ridge High School Holiday Food Basket Giveaway. I In previous years, the Walnut Ridge Food Pantry Club has helped to coordinate the giveaway, pack food boxes, and load food boxes into parents' vehicles at Walnut Ridge High School. In 2020, due to the COVID restrictions, students and volunteers were not allowed in our school building, which presented a major challenge in carrying out our annual holiday food basket giveaway. How did we address these challenges? We established three very specific goals. Secure an alternate location to hold the holiday food basket giveaway. Recruit volunteers from alternate organizations. Provide grocery store gift cards to families so that they can purchase perishable food items. Goal number one, secure an alternate location. Bishop Timothy J. Clark and the First Church of God opened up their doors for us to hold the event where we could pack and distribute food boxes. Goal number two, recruit volunteers. We were able to recruit volunteers from a number of different organizations. Goal number three, purchase Kroger gift cards. In the past, we purchased turkeys for each individual family. However, because we had to move the location of the event, we decided to provide each family with a gift card so that they could purchase the perishable food items that they needed. How do we rate our project? COVID-19 challenged us to be more creative. We were able to bridge partnerships in a manner that we were never able to before. We were able to assist many more people. We're happy to report that this project was our most successful yet, and we were able to serve over 170 people. Hey Denzel, we're gonna to have to time-wise move on. Uh, if we have time at the end, we'll come back and you can share these reflections with us, okay? opportunity to thank our thank you, thank you. Okay. all right hey appreciate it very very much Hiltonia middle school you are up um, my name is Ray Edwards and I'm an eighth grader at Hiltonia middle school I'm here with Tyvan Thai and Natalia Santiominos the name of our project was stop the violence and we are motivated by the increase in gun violence in our community Last summer, we lost a student to gun violence, so we have lost many former students. Our goals were to be in contact with the community and try to do something positive for our community. We prepared with Ms. Alberta Mohammed from the Columbus Care Coalition, an organization that supports victims of trauma. In our group meetings, we learned about violence and how it comes in different ways. We tried to learn how to help our community and to spread a positive message. We met once a week for about eight weeks and decided to create some TikTok videos to spread a positive message in our community and even further. We thought the project was helpful and some of the people in our group have been going through some things and it helped to talk. We learned that we should all do our part to work together on problems in our community. Even the simplest things can help out the community. We want to make sure that this violence doesn't continue to happen. And we see it happening to all different cultures. Makaya Bryant was a former Hiltonia student and many people knew her and were affected by her death. Many people are terrified for their families and themselves. We should all get involved to help our community. Um, we uh, uploaded a TikTok not too long ago to spread awareness about different things that are happening within our community. 
Um, I made a TikTok about Micaiah Bryant and one of my best friends who lost their lives. Micaiah was shot by the police and my best friend killed her stubbornly. I'm going to screen share and show you the video that I posted. Um, my target just froze. <laughs> hey, I wanted to thank you all that I wanted to tell everybody I was going to say this at the end, but this is a good time. All the visitors on the Zoom today. If you have uh, questions or comments you want to make to any of the teams, email them to me and I will pass them on to the teams. Uh, hey, and listen, you know what you're reinforcing is we hope never to have to do this on Zoom again. We all want to be in person with you uh, to be able to just be right there with you and say, thanks a million for taking on this really, really serious, important issue. And, and it's got to have made a, a real difference and I'm sure it impacted you personally too, as you as you've said. So, did you all work together as a team? Okay. Um, yes, we worked together as a team. Okay, we would um meet once a week for uh, eight weeks, and then we come up with the idea of spreading a positive message. We made um a few TikToks. And we had a few students which helped on the project. It was Tyvin and Talia here. That's okay. Clearly, you learned a lot about teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always easy, but again, the, the end result really speaks for itself. And congratulations to you very, very, very much. Um, and thanks for sharing all this. We know it's a uh, it's an emotional thing for you and for all of us. So thank you. Well, thanks again, Hiltonia Briggs High School. You are up. This is our Lindbergh Reading Buddies Crush Group. Well, welcome to the next big thing. We're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves and our project. First off, we have London Brooks, who is a big member of our team, but she unfortunately could not be here today. I am Echo Krieger. I'm a junior at Briggs High School. My name is Kayla Brody. I am a junior at West High School. My name is Emma Mullins, and I am a junior at Briggs High School. The Briggs at Lindbergh Reading Buddies project began in 2016 as a partnership between Briggs High School and Lindbergh Elementary School. High school seniors acted as mentors to prepare third grade students to take the state reading exam and to support students' social emotional maturity. In that process, they would read to mentees, listen to the mentees read, and engage their elementary student in many relationship building activities. Due to COVID, we have made a few changes to our goals and our process. Today, our mission is to show our Lindbergh Elementary School mentees that the key to success is through the road of a story. Currently, we are in the process of recording ourselves reading elementary school books and posting the readings to YouTube or Flipgrid, a teacher resource, a teacher resource site. Our goal is for our elementary school partners to listen to books online with their teacher or parent. We created a website in which students may access the ebook and author information for each book. 
Last, we partnered with the Briggs High School Library to purchase the books we read for engaging siblings during family nights at school. As of now, our project is in the beginning stages and will continue to the next school. We decided to focus on this project because research shows that individuals who struggle with reading may experience the following. Low academic scores, higher dropout rates, and lower self-esteem. We found out that reading to kids improves brain connectivity, increases academic scores and development, and increases self-esteem. In the foreseeable future, we hope to host a book drive for these kids so that when they do fall in love with books, we'll be there to deliver. We hope to record at least 10 books by next school year. Then they will be able to link to the books via our website. Keen, that's wonderful. You're all juniors, right? And so uh, it sounded like you plan to keep on going with Lindbergh and expand. Um, that's that's terrific. I've had a chance to talk to some of the Lindbergh teachers, and and I know they've told you, but I want to just say to everybody, they really value what you've been able to do with their students to, you know, supplement what they're doing in class every day. And and those younger kids, they really uh, they really get a, a positive kick out of working with you as as role models. So excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, are any of you going to be teachers? Do you think in your future that's uh, that's a goal? It's okay if not. I'm just curious. I'm actually interested in becoming a teacher. Okay. Okay. Well, again, congratulations and uh, shoot those uh, those kids. I I'm sure they're applauding you every day when you're with them. So here we go. We want to thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure to introduce fellow Rotarian, Renee Shoemate. Good afternoon. Thanks again to Centennial, Walnut Ridge, Hiltonia, and Briggs. Hello, everyone. I'm Rotarian, Renee Shoemate, and it is my privilege to introduce Galen Graham. Galen is representing our club scholarship committee, which is dedicated to assisting Columbus students with their after high school education. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the many benefactors and volunteers that make the Rotary Scholarship Program possible. Uh, I'm very grateful to the Rotarians who have taken time to conduct these interviews for the service above self scholarships. I also want to take a moment to thank Krista Bauer of the Columbus City Schools. He does a wonderful job uh, getting the applications together, encouraging students to apply setting up the interviews and we really appreciate her, appreciate her hard work in making this program a success. Support of the Columbus students has been a major initiative for the Columbus Rotary for a long time. Every year, dozens of students benefit from our support. And as you know, uh, this past year has been very disruptive for high school students. Many of them have wound up delaying their college careers. These Rotary Service Above South scholarships now play an important role in enabling high school students, high achieving ones, from the Columbus City Schools to move ahead and achieve their educational goals. These students have all shown that they reflect the rotary value of service above self. We have several, uh, hopefully all, of the scholarship recipients with us this afternoon. I'm going to ask each one to introduce themselves, tell us their high school, their college, and their college major. Uh, the first award is the J. Robinson McCormick Memorial Scholarship. This has been awarded to Alexia Wilbur. Alexia, are you with us this afternoon? Okay, well, uh, perhaps not. And if that's the case, then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Congratulations to her. Second, we have Theodosia Yamano. She'll be receiving the Marjorie Otten Smith Memorial Scholarship. Theodosia? Can you introduce yourself? Hi, yes. My name is Theodosia. I plan to attend OSU um, upcoming fall. 
to major in biology. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, I'm also from Whetstone High School. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have Elijah Harvey. Elijah, are you with us? Yes, I'm with y'all today. How are you doing? Well, hello, my, well, hello, I'm good. Hello, my name is Elijah Harvey, and I go to East High School, and I'm attending Central State University for Mass Communication. Very great. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Elijah is receiving the Judy Ann McLaughlin Memorial Scholarship. Next, we have the G. Robert Bowers Family Scholarship, and that's been awarded to Haley Warren. Haley, can you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Haley Warren. I will be going to Howard University in the fall. Um, I attend Eastmore Academy now, and I will be majoring in chemistry. Great, well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the next award is the Presidential Scholarship, and we're gonna ask John O'Meara to make that uh, introduction. John, are you with us? I am, and thank you for yeah, meeting, it's a great honor to make the presentation today. I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm not seeing a reaction. That's not a good sign. Are you there shaking your head? All right. Well, I'm honored to present to Jalen Jackson today. And Jalen is a senior at Centennial High School, uh, planning to attend Denison University and has a, has a great history of service to the community. And uh, I don't know if you can still keep hearing him. I says, my internet is unstable. So yeah, you're, you know, anyhow, Jalen, uh, was a four-year member of the basketball team, and he's a, a team captain. He has also been very involved in helping uh, feed the homeless for many, many years and has done a great number of programs through them. Uh, he, as I said, planned to attend uh, Dennis University during health sciences, and we're delighted to be able to present him with a $10,000 scholarship for our peers at Dennis. So uh, thank you, um, Rotor, thank you to uh, Jalen for such a great application for doing all the work he has to get to this point. Best wishes going forward. Jalen, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the um, scholarship. Um, just to go off what he said, um, I'm a senior at Centennial High School. I plan on um, attending Denison University to continue my academic and athletic career. Um, I'll be on the basketball team next year. And I plan on majoring if everything goes as planned in the um, health science field and becoming a physical therapist. Great. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. You. And our final scholarship is the Make a Difference Scholarship, uh, generously supported by Mary Beth and Luke McCormick. And this year it has been uh, awarded to Deborah Olavade. Deborah, are you with us? And can you tell us a little about yourself? Yes, of course. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Alabade. I currently attend Columbus Alternative High School, and I just recently committed to Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and I plan to major in social work and then also do pre-law. Great. Well, congratulations on this award. So thank you very much for uh, this opportunity to introduce these scholars to you. Uh, and is that uh, Alicia Wilburn? No, that's not. So I see. Um, in any event, uh, thank you very much. Congratulations to our recipients. Uh, and again, we're very proud of the fact that Rotary has been able to support you in your pursuit of higher education. So thank you. Uh, on behalf of all the Rotarians who are watching and those who weren't able to be with us, uh, there's almost 250 of us, and we just could not be prouder uh, to be able to work with the school system and, again, uh, provide this support for you students moving on. Uh, think about this. Like I said, there's almost 250 of us. Uh, once you're done with college, um, you come back around and see us. Uh, we might want to hire you, by golly, because uh, you are exemplary people. So again, congratulations, everybody. Uh, moving on back to our to our presentations by our, uh, our uh, uh, community service teams, uh, Beechcroft High School, you're up. Hello, everyone. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Talia, and I'm a senior at Beechcroft High School. Hi, I'm Chloe Abaka. I'm a senior at Beechcroft. Hello, my name is Kevin DeMond. I'm also a senior from Beechcroft High School. So a little bit about our project. So we uh, we have an annual talent show that we started up a couple, like maybe two years ago. And with COVID, we were not able to do our traditional talent show um, as we would. And it was usually a fundraiser, but um, you know, it was something everyone in the school looked forward to. So you could give us a moment for us to share our screen here. Okay, sorry. Okay, so. So our idea originated, like we said, it was an annual tradition. We always did it for the fundraiser for the seniors, but everybody always looked forward to the talent show. So even though COVID came, we didn't want to not have one for everybody because that's how we get students involved and to get people to want to show their talents, people like the dance and such. So we didn't want to let COVID not let students be able to have fun within like a school project. Mm -hmm. um, the goals of the show was mainly to get like people to participate because like she said this is a yearly thing we always did before like like Christmas and we decided like for freshmen because they're new we're all online they don't really like have any interaction with any of us so this was something to like make them like more interactive with the school All right, so we wanted uh, to have everyone included. We didn't want anyone to feel left out. So the way we had people audition was we had people submit things to um, submit things to us, and we just kind of put them to different categories. So um, we put them to three main categories, which was art, music, and dance. So um during covid we learned a lot of new things like for example like zoom calls that's one that's kind of how we did our video um we we streamed on youtube first we all made the powerpoint we got people to like recruit we talked to a lot of students to get them to like actually like try to do the powerpoint i mean do the present do the talent show and we made the presentation we made it on powerpoint and normally, if we were in person, the way people would vote is by clapping or like like how loud like someone cheers or basically. But we couldn't do that obviously this year, so we decided to use poll everywhere to like vote, and then um, people would like put in their votes. And we had a big Kahoot game after, and it was really fun. We we were all on the Zoom call, but then we streamed it onto YouTube, so like people in classes could join the Zoom call from YouTube instead of everybody being on the Zoom call. So these are... Um, these are some of the art pieces that we had in our art section that kids actually drew by their cell. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. I love it. So this is, um, yeah. um, so we, um, again, like we said, we use a talent show um, every year as a way, because by halfway through the semester, we're trying to get everyone to be um, inclusive, like kind of find friends, bring their, um, show themselves a little bit to the school. And that's what the talent show memo was for. And I think this year we did a pretty okay job of getting to do that. Yeah. So we would also like to thank our advisors, Mrs. Wright and Mrs. Harris for helping us orchestrate it Dr. and Dr. Stone. Stone for helping us orchestrate it and put it together. Yes. And thank you guys for listening to our presentation. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Bell, too. Bye. How oh, wonderful. I've had a chance to see the, uh, the talent show and it is awesome. And uh, if you all, I, I don't think I still have the link, but if you send that to me, and then if folks want to let me know, I'll get you the link so you can watch it. It is awesome. And way to go as a, as a team. Please, could you please say that again? Sorry. Oh, I just said, if you can send me the link to the talent show itself, which I was able to see, 
uh, then I can make it available to uh, all the members of the Rotary Club who might want to watch it too. Yes, sir. We got you. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, way to go. Way to go. Yeah. It's, it's good you've gotten over your shyness. That's <laughs> all right. Hey, Columbus Africa Central Early College, you are up. Hello, everyone. So today we'll be talking about our event, which is in Copa. Can everybody hear me? Yes. So I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Okay, so Sankofa is our gift to the community and it helps Columbus and the broader community understand the value of Afrocentric school and, and our campus, the importance of African-centered education. When, and more importantly, Sankofa, how it helps us as a CAC community becoming more like the Dead Sea and by focusing on others. We had a lineup of 12 honorees, which I per personally presented myself, Mrs. Lynn Logan Grimes and Mr. Curtis Harrison, and my other fellow student. Would you like to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Landon Steele. I'm from Columbus Upper Central Bay College. I also present Ms. Ms. Marilyn Hill, and I also present to Ms. Janet Jackson. Hey, our Sankofa has been going on for four years, but because of COVID, we recently had to broadcast it on NBC4 on February 23rd at 7.30, if anybody had ever seen it. <laughs> our students that were introducing our honorees were selected by our student council and get creative. Here's a short clip from our Sankofa broadcast. To go back to our roots to move forward. We should reach back and gather the best of what our past has to teach us. Whatever we have lost, forgotten, foregone, or been stripped of can be reclaimed, preserved, and perpetuated. In order to ensure our future. In order to ensure our future. Okay, so our, our event is a very fun, fun experience for everyone, even though this year since it was broadcasted, we only had a few students in the building and we had recorded it together. Usually though, we have a big gathering. They have dances, there's interviews, board discussions and college fairs. Even the students, of all, students and people of all ages can enjoy. Thank you so much for your time and your consideration and letting us share our projects. And hey, Alicia, uh, just the same as I, I mentioned with the other team, I've been able to watch the whole Sankofa uh, video and it is fantastic. If you can send me that link, then I can make it available to folks who get in touch with me. Uh, it, it is just outstanding. And uh, I, I, for one, this is no surprise. I didn't know what San Copa was, but after listening to you and watching the the, uh, the video, I can certainly understand why you all got so deeply involved in it. And uh, I'm sure it had a wonderful impact on everybody who saw it. So congratulations to you and your team. Way to go. Thank you. Our uh, final community service presentation will be from uh, Columbus Alternative High School. You're up. Hello, everyone. We just want to start with a quick video. Oh, my gosh, you guys are so stupid. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for your patience. <laughs> After the civil unrest that took place during the summer of 2020, a group of students at Columbus Alternative High School wanted to create a space of conversation and change, focusing on the social injustices surrounding race, sexuality, and other identities in our community and beyond. Over the summer of 2020, the first thing we decided to do was create a webinar series with community members, leaders, and our school's alumni. We invited local business owners, politicians, artists, and professors, among other people, to speak about being explicitly anti-bigoted and anti-racist. Our video series covered a variety of topics, from language use to policy changes, and even art as a form of protest. We then shared our series with our student body and school community, and it is now being used as a tool to get incoming students to begin to discuss social equity. Now we're currently working with Otterbein University on social justice with knowledge on topics such as propaganda and how to deal with extremists. And we're using this knowledge to um, make meaningful changes to our school and beyond by working with the professional development of the staff. With the help of Otterbein University, we have been able to divert our staff's professional development to center around assuring that the school and the classrooms are accepting and inclusive of all students. With this, we have seen some change with the student-teacher interactions where teachers are now more likely to talk about the social issues that are happening throughout our nation. Before we all graduate, we plan to help carry the next generation of Qs. We do not want Qs to stop with us, but instead be a rite of passage for those willing and dedicated to striving for social equity here at CAUSE. All current members of Qs have vowed to continue this effort and will be available in the future to aid in its progression, and we hope it continues, and we hope to continue this tradition. In the upcoming weeks, a survey will be released for current juniors as their application for Qs, where they will be asked to express their interest in social equity and to explain past involvement with it. After the new members of Qs have been selected, we will work to introduce them to our goals and past achievements. Although we will be deciding on the students who will be the center core for all of the decisions of Qs, ultimately Qs will also become a club open for all students to join and participate. Although we are focused on making a change within our school community, uh, one of our goals with Qs is to prepare those, um, those to help in making a greater impact in the bigger community and giving them the tools that they need to tackle these complex social problems um, wherever they go and to be the catalyst for change in the world. We would also like to say thank you to our principal, our principal standards for allowing us to have the service opportunity and also to our teacher helpers, Ms. Thornburg, Ms. Harris, Ms. Webb, and Mr. Richardson. Um, our internship coordinator, Ms. Smith, and also those who worked with us as we partnered with Otterbein, Mr. Prasak, Ms. Judy, and Ms. K. Could you, uh, could you just uh, real briefly though, tell us what uh, the kind of interaction you had with Otterbein? How did they, how did they help? Yeah, so we engaged in a social justice academy uh, for the duration of the school year, where we engaged in talks of uh, privilege, extremism, media, and all forms of uh, different types of uh, social inequalities and different racial injustices. Are they committed to stay with the, the folks who are going to follow you up next year? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we can talk about this later. I, I Recording stopped. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't help but ask, would this be something that you could share with other schools? Originally, uh, when we started this group, we, Recording in progress. we plan to think on a much bigger scale. And um, in the future, we plan to expand it to where it's CCS wide and also to expand it to urban and more rural schools other than just in Toronto City schools. Excellent, excellent. I mean, it's such remarkable work, and uh, the more people you can reach, I know that's that's part of your goal. Uh, that's really, really outstanding. Uh, any uh, any future plans to stay? You know, once you go to college and out, do you going to stay in this field generally? 
of course, like I mentioned earlier, I plan to major in social work, which is um, alongside with these social justice issues. And as we're planning to pass down this club, as we stated in the video, you have interviewed um, some juniors to be the union leaders for CUBE next year. And also we plan to open up the club for all ages and all of our students to join. We plan to continuously come back to COG and help with the uh, formation and the uh, future of CUBE. Beautiful, we gotta keep moving, but really thank you for this. And uh, unfortunately this issue is going to remain with us, but by golly, uh, with a lot of folks working on this like you and us and others together, we're gonna make some progress by golly. So thank you. Thank you. So now here are Meredith Day and Keith Stimper, who are the co-chairs of our Student Service Above Self Committee. On behalf of our 30 member committee and our whole club, congratulations to all the student teams and their faculty advisors. You did positive work under highly challenging circumstances to help make our world a better place. And as always, thanks. Recording to, stopped. Thanks to our career partnership with the Columbus City Schools as we serve the community together. Galen said it earlier, but we want to make sure everybody who's on the Zoom call today is aware of Krista Bauer and all she does to help this program move along uh, with the uh, with a part of the school's Department of Engagement. Just one of those incredible people who just does it all. And, uh, Krista, the Columbus Rotary, Rotary, Rotary salutes you and, and thanks you for all you do. An amazing thing. We are right at one o'clock. <laughs> Who would have known? Yeah. We uh we appreciate everybody who's zoomed on. I know it's over a hundred people and, and students. We again congratulate you and wish you well next year wherever you're going. Um I know that everybody's involved here wishes like crazy for students, teachers, administrators, families that next year school will be in person every day for everybody. Let's let's hope for the best with that with our pandemic, because we know it's been a really, really tough year for you all. Uh, so getting back together would just be fantastic. What that would also mean is uh, this Rotary partnership with the Plum City Schools, we could go back to having our in-person fairs, uh, middle school fair at the Fawcett Center with a couple hundred people and the uh, high school fair at the Ohio State University Student Union with over 400 people. So you underclassmen, uh, we'll see you next year. And for you seniors, again, best wishes and thanks everybody, everybody for taking the time to Zoom with us today. We're adjourned. <laughs>